Welcome to Fictionary. I'm your host, Deetra, and I'm so glad that you're here and that you are you. If this is your first time joining me, Fictionary is a place for you to sit back, relax, and escape reality for a few moments. I like to give a drink recommendation every episode, and it's usually what I'm drinking at the moment. However, today I am going to rhapsodize over this spot I recently discovered in Old City, Philadelphia called May May. Now, I say discovered, and I realize that I sound like a freaking conquistador, conquistador, or conquistadora. Mm. Anyway, I'm going to clarify and say that it was a discovery for me. It was new to me. They've been there for however long they've been there doing their thing, and it was new to me. Anyway, I literally loved everything about May May. I loved the ambiance. I loved the staff, the artwork, the light fixtures, the food, the drinks, everything. Like I went inside and I was just like, this is my new favorite place. And you know, it's not huge. It's not like a really big uh, facility, but you don't feel crowded, even though when I was there, they were pretty much at capacity. And they even had a live DJ and he was hot guys unfortunately had a wedding band on so you know that wasn't happening but he was still pretty to look at good job dj there <laughs> anyway meme was a whole vibe and i definitely recommend take checking it out if you get the opportunity now i would like to clarify that this is not a paid sponsorship but maybe just maybe if they happen to hear this they'll hook me up with one of their salted pear margaritas which is my drink of choice today i wish that i had one right now but alas i am at home recording and truthfully there's really no place i'd rather be or at least not many places i'd rather be because i love doing this so before we get into our stories today i thought that it would be fun to talk about some weird ass news stories you know, the world is kind of cray cray, so why not talk about it? We're not going to get any politics or anything like that because, you know, there's plenty of time for that in life. We like to keep it light here on uh, Fictionary. Today on Dietra D News Network, we'll be reporting on a world gone mad. Do you buy and trade stocks? If you do, chances are you are being outperformed by a hairy little guy. No, not Nick Jonas, a hamster named Mr. Gox. From his fancy hamster cage, he is day trading with the pros. He runs on his hamster wheel, which allows him to select among different cryptocurrencies. Picture the Price is Right wheel that spins and it lands on an amount. It's kind of like that, except with cryptocurrencies and a running little hamster. Once he chooses, he decides if he's buying or selling by running through one of two tunnels that are labeled, conveniently enough, buying and selling. So his decision is then processed through a real trading platform with real money. He started with 326 euros, which as of today is equivalent to about 328 US dollars. He started trading in June and his portfolio is up almost 20%. As of September 12th, he's performing better than Bitcoin, the NASDAQ 100, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, and the S&P 500. Excuse me while I go follow Mr. Gox on Twitter. I just won $15 on a scratch-off ticket, and he might be able to give me some investment tips. Meanwhile, in other news, Mama Roo has a new jewel in her tiara. The buzz around town is researchers from Australia's National Science Agency have named a brilliantly shiny soldier fly with amazing legs, Opalum Ru Paul. Brian Lassard, aka the Fly Guy, who's also responsible for naming the Scapacia Beyonce fly after pop singer Beyonce said, I was watching a lot of RuPaul's Drag Race while examining the species, and I know it would challenge RuPaul on the runway serving fierce looks, Lassard said. It has a costume of shiny metallic rainbow colors, and it has legs for days. I think once RuPaul sees it, she'll definitely realize it's quite fierce and hopefully appreciate the name. Well, Ru. I hope you love your new fly, because like you always say, 
if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you gonna love someone else, child? You better preach, Mama Ru. That's all for today on Teacher D News Network. Join us next time. Okay, friends, let's go ahead and get into our stories today. I hope that you enjoyed that segment. It's just a little silly bit of fun. I don't know. Excited to try something new. But they are all, those were all, those were both actual stories, like news stories, like they're real things that are happening. Nothing too crazy, but you can Google it if you don't believe me. Um, Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to be reading three original short fiction stories. Um, They're each 100 words or less. And before I start them, I'll give you the title. I'll give you the genre, the action, and the character or word um, that were generated uh, through these random props prompts that I created. And then using those prompts, I wrote the stories. Um, Anyway, let's get our listening ears on because it's story time. Our first story is titled Reality Shift. The genre is sci-fi. The word is string. And the action is gossiping. I feel a tug on the ethereal red string connected to my heart and feel the pain radiating from the heart on the other side. Out there. Somewhere. The visitors came and went in a flash, leaving our myths and legends as our new and terrifying reality. People speak in whispers, saying it was God's final vengeance. Others say it was aliens. Some say it was scientists. I don't know who or why this happened. I only know that I need to get to the other end of this string before it's too the end so just in case you're not familiar there's like this uh, red string of destiny kind of um, that can, is said to connect two people so the idea behind this story was uh, playing upon that that you know that's kind of like uh, this myth or legend that we have but in this shift in reality that legend is now true so anyway hope you guys enjoyed our next story is titled kick his ass the genre is action adventure the word is exhausted and the action is jumping shit i grunt as i take another hit this dirt bag shot me and won't stop targeting my weak point His foot flies toward my head and I drop into a smooth roll across the rooftop. I'm exhausted, but I'm on my feet and running to the edge with no hesitation. I jump. Soaring through the air, I briefly question my choice until I land solidly on the next rooftop. The douchebag follows me, but I'm ready. I brace myself and run toward him at top speed. Before he lands, I strike three devastating blows, completely incapacitated. The end. So, I like that story. I like a little bit of action adventure. I'd love to be a badass. I don't know about you guys, but I think that would be awesome. Our final story for today is titled, I Told You This Was a Bad Idea. The genre is historical fiction, the word is summon, and the action is visiting a theme park. This is the last time I listened to you. Summon Tichuba, you said. It'll be fun, you said. Well, look at us now. Shanice clutches the fabric of her colonial dress. I never anticipated this. Being at the Salem Witch Park must have done something. I pat her shoulder. It doesn't work. No shit. There's no Tichuba and we're stuck in freaking Salem. During the witch trials. She sobs and I feel lost. We can get through this, Shanice. We'll blend in and figure out a way home. She shrugs. I mean, 
What other choice do we have? I said. The end. Yay! Guys, I love that story. I love uh, time travel. So, like, one of my favorite shows and my sister's favorite show, we both love uh, Doctor Who. And, you know, he's like this uh, time traveling uh, space alien time lord, to be precise. And he flies around in his uh, police blue call box, also known as a TARDIS. And uh, in this TARDIS, he goes to different times in history and in space. And, like, it's really cool. But, anyways, I love that. Uh, little that element in a story especially like for me in my mind when I'm thinking this is historical fiction it's like modern historic historical fiction so taking you know modern characters and putting them in the past and see how they uh, survive I personally do not think that I would have thrived uh, in any time before 1970 maybe 1960 but 1970 for sure Thanks so much for joining me, everyone. I hope that you'll be back next week. We have some exciting things coming for the month of October. So again, be on the lookout. And until next time, keep on reading. 